Good morning, everybody. Hey, thanks for coming out on this uh, beautiful, sunny day that we haven't had a lot of, but thanks for showing up. I know there, if you've traveled around, there's a lot of places that's still very, very icy and not so well, but uh, you guys braved it. Maybe you have a good, nice, no snow on your driveway. Um, Mine hits the sun, so I don't have any snow on my driveway, so I'm thankful for that. But uh, this morning, we're going to kick it off with uh, the offering message. Um, but if everybody will, if everybody wants to stand up real quick. So, if y'all don't know, I'm a manager at Home Depot, and the first thing we do when we have a meeting or a gathering together is we, like, get stretched out and get limbered up. So, why don't we do that for Jesus this morning? So, on the count of three... Give me your best Jesus, okay? One, two, three. Jesus! Now we want to, let's do a, on the count of three, let's do a big shout for Jesus where we move our hands and get all limbered up. One, two, three. Jesus! All right, I think you guys are ready. Y'all can be seated. Again, thanks for coming out. Um, it is fun. Uh, Jesus is fun. If everybody didn't know, Freddie said this is fun. Jesus is absolutely fun. So uh, as we get into the, the tithing part of the service, uh, I came across this, I don't know if it was a devotional or what, but it says, what are you willing to do for Jesus? And it starts with Matthew twenty two thirty six 36 through 39. It says, Master... Which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great, greatest commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There are some things that Christ requires of us that we will be unable to do if we do not love him. Actually, Many things will be completely uninteresting to us if we don't love him. John 14, 23 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man loves me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and he will come unto him and make our abode with him. So, for instance, right now we may be able to do this for him, but we may not be able to do that for him because we have an immature love for, for Jesus. However, as we keep following him and growing in him, he will make us fall in love with him. Just so you know, the more you get to know him, the more you're going to fall in love with him. So what is it that you're unwilling to do for Jesus right now? Are you unwilling to forgive? Are you unwilling to extend grace? Are you unwilling to love unconditionally? Are you unwilling to give? No doubt, a lot of these things are very difficult tasks. But they are even more difficult if you do not have Jesus. You have to have Jesus to, have these, to be able to do these tasks. Isaiah 53 and 5 says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Whenever we get to the point to where we think we can't do something for him, remember this verse. Remember those words. By his stripes, we are healed. The reason we can do all things through Christ is because of all the things he's done for us. So when you think about unforgiveness and forgiving somebody, when you think about having lo unconditional love for people, when you think about giving, you have to have Jesus in your heart to do all these things and to do them the way Jesus has intended us to do them. So if everybody will go ahead and stand up on your feet. They're going to play a little bit of music. If you have your tithes and your offerings, bring them forth. Put them in, in the black box here. Uh, if you pay them online, pay them online. But uh, as we get this morning kicked off, go around the room. Tell everybody that you're happy to see them. Glad that they made it safe. And uh, then we will get into some praise and worship after that.
right, guys, if everybody can make your way back to your seats, please. And just go ahead and stand up, and we will get this service and this offering absolutely blessed. Brother Keith, looking good this morning. Why don't you come up here and pray for us? Y'all will stand and point your hand this way for us. Father God, we thank you for this brand new day that's given us. We thank you for your love, mercy, and grace you set down upon us. Lord God, now we ask you to touch this offering, Lord God, and spread it across the world according to your will. We ask you, Lord God, to touch our pastor as he preaches the word today. Open our hearts and our ears, Lord God, to receive the message. And I ask for a double blessing upon this praise to be ushered in the presence of the Holy Spirit. In your precious name we pray. Amen. All right, just a, a couple of announcements. Um, so if you didn't get in a bulletin, that's my first announcement. You need to get a bulletin and read it. That way you're in the know. But uh, Cassie's got a connect group on the 27th at 3 p.m. So you're more than welcome to go bowling. If you like bowling, bowling's awesome. Um, and then... On Valentine's Day, February the 14th at 7 p.m., there will be um, a worship and testimony night at 7 p.m., February 14th. Come to that. Lots of sugar. It says sugar, treats, sweet treats, fun. There's no reason why you shouldn't come and have a great time. So those are the couple of announcements I have. I'm going to turn it to, over to the praise team so we can get into some worship. We'll stand back up and it's a privilege that we get to come into the Lord's house today if if you've been cooped up at home um, this week then I would imagine that it's even more of a privilege to come into the Lord's house that we could gather together and the Bible says that when two or more gather together in his name that he would be with us that he would be here and so lord i'm just asking you right now that lord as we're gathered together lord we're gathered together in your house lord in your name and god we ask that you just be here lord that you would be here in a mighty way lord that you have your way that you have your will that it would be accomplished in this place today lord that that the people that walked in the doors they're not here by accident or by coincidence, Lord, but that you planned, that you purposed for them to be here today. And we ask you, Lord, that you just do a mighty work in each one of our hearts, that you do a mighty work, Lord, in our minds and our situations and circumstances, Lord. And that as we worship you, Lord, that, that you would just take control of matters and things that we can't control, Lord. We give them to you right now, Lord. We give you our hearts, we give you our attention. As we worship you, Lord, help us to just focus on who you are, Lord. And we thank you for being here with us, Lord. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. The fire and wind come and do it again. Open up the gates, head heaven on in. Come rest on us, come rest on us. If fire and wind come and do it again, open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us, 
Come rest on us, a fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, head heaven on him. Come rest on us, come rest on us. Oh, fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, head heaven on him. Come rest on us, come rest on us. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you move it. I'm here and I know you will feel me come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you will move it. I'm here and I know you will feel me.
worthy of every song we could ever sing. Come on, let's praise Him. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. We live for you. Sing holy, holy. There is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. And show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead in your love to those around me. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all praise we could ever be worthy of every breath we could ever be live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, we live for you, and holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around 
that are in this room today that you're hurting that you're questioning God how can this be your plan that you're facing the unknown and your faith is being tested and your obedience is being stretched. I want you to know that we have a firm foundation. And even when our world seems to be crumbling around us, that we can know that if we know Jesus and if we're holding on to his hand, that we have a firm foundation. He's the rock on which I stand. When all other ground is sinking sand. Thank you. I was reading a devotion this week and it was talking about when we cry out to the Lord that he hears us we don't serve Buddha or some other God that's buried in a grave somewhere but we serve a living Savior we serve a God who knows what we need before we even know we serve a God who never sleeps he never slumbers. And He knows every hair that's upon your head right now. He knows the things that you're facing. He knows the things that you're walking through. He knows the hurt and He knows the pain and He knows the struggle. And I was reading this devotion and it was about this orphanage in China where these missionaries went in and, and it was just silent because these babies had realized that it didn't matter how long they cried because nobody was going to come and help them. Can you imagine that? That the babies didn't cry in their cribs because they knew it didn't matter how long they cried that no one was going to come and help them. And it just reminded me of the fact that we can cry out to the Lord and we can know that He hears us. We can be those children that cry and say, Lord, how is this your plan? How is this going to work for my good? Lord, how is this going to happen? But we can know that he is a heavenly father that is not like our earthly fathers and mothers, but he is a heavenly father that knows exactly what we need and he knows when we need it. I don't know about you all, but there's been some times in my life where I've cried and cried and cried and cried because I didn't know what to do. The Bible says that when we get to heaven, that every tear will we be wiped away and we won't have to worry about crying anymore because He will be there <laughs> and we'll get to see Him face to face. That's my firm foundation. We serve a God that loves us. And if you can just wake up in the morning and if you can just remember that, if you can just remind yourself when things get hard that I have a God, I have a heavenly Father that loves me. 
so much so that he sent his perfect, sinless son to give his life to pay for me. No matter what I've done or who I've been or who I've been with, that he loves me. That's our firm foundation. That's what we stand. That's what we build everything on is the fact that he loves me when I don't deserve it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you hear our cry. You hear the cry of our hearts, Lord, and you know. Lord, you know how to fix it. You know how to work it out. You know how to do it when we don't know how. And we're asking you, Lord, I'm asking you on behalf of the people that are here right now, Lord, that you would move in this place in a mighty way. God, that your will would be accomplished here. Lord, that people's hurts and their needs and the situations and circumstances that they face, God, that you be right in the middle of it. God, like I said last week, you are El Roy. That means the God who sees. Not only do you hear our cries, God, but you see our pain. You see our circumstances, God. You see everything that we face, Lord, and you know you're the answer. And we thank you for it. And we hold on to it as our firm foundation. We build upon you, Lord. that you are a firm foundation, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We praise you right now. Lord, we honor your presence in this room. God, we honor your presence right now. We thank you for being here with us. We thank you that even though we don't do anything to deserve you, Lord, that you're still here. That you hear the cry of your people. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
sing that bridge again and I know that we're not supposed to dwell on our past and we're not supposed to think back on the way that things used to be in the life that we used to live but sometimes it's a good reminder that we don't know how much it costs to see our sin upon that cross we weren't there that day but I can only imagine for the things that I've done that someone would have to suffer and to die and be tormented and humiliated out in public for me, the fact that he would do that. It makes no sense. But he did it anyway.
Never stop. 
consume God all we are we give you permission our hearts are yours we want you oh we want you so come and consume God all we are we give you permission our hearts are yours we want you oh we want you come on let's sing it so come and consume God all we are we give you permission our hearts are yours we want you oh we want you one more time so come and consume God all we are we give you permission our hearts are yours we want you we love you and we'll never stop we can live without you Jesus we love you and we can't get enough Lord, may you accept our praise in this house as a sweet-smelling offering unto you. For you deserve it, for you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy, Lord, to be honored, God. And we love you. And Lord, we're not going to stop. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for all that you've already done. And we thank you, Lord, for the things that are on their way. Because you love us and you have good plans for us. God, I just ask you right now that you would anoint pastor, that you use him. God, that you use him as a mighty weapon in your hands, God. For your kingdom, your glory, and your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Can you give the Lord a praise offering again? Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, praise team, for that sweet, sweet worship. We appreciate the presence of the Lord this morning more than anything. I'm thankful today. I know that we've had a, a little bit of weather this week, and January has been a, a tough month for some of you folks already. Let me say that I'm glad this is the 21st day of January, 21 days of fasting and I'm ready to eat a candy bar. How about you guys? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm thankful that tomorrow is 22, day 22 of January, and uh, this, this fast will be completed today for all of you guys that have joined with us. I know that some folk have been on the Daniel fast, and whatever you've been fasting, whatever prayers that you've been praying, I pray that God continues to touch you and minister to you. I know that prayer and fasting is not just for January, but it's a good way to kick off the year, isn't it? Amen. It's good to see all of you here this morning. Appreciate everybody coming out on this cold January day. I know it's uh, tough in some places. Our subdivision road is like a skating rink this morning. It honestly, it has inches of ice on it, and it is amazing, but... Uh, Hopefully this week we've got rain coming, and I know that it's going to get rid of some of this snowfall, but I'm so glad you're here. It would be uh, really tough for me just to preach to Mother Teresa this morning, but I would have done that if I, if I had to, because she needs it. 
She needs it. Just kidding. Just kidding. Praise the Lord. How many, how many ministers do we have in the house this morning? Can I see your hand? Just, just stand up. Those of you that are ministers that are here this morning, stand up with us. I know we've got some visiting ministers. We've got a visiting guy back here. Stand up with us, brother. Praise the Lord. Hispanic pastor with us this morning. We're so thankful for his family. And it's good to see every one of you guys that are ministers that are doing the work of the Lord. I really, really appreciate that. My dear sister here, I just briefly got to speak with her as she came in, but I told her there's something about the kindred spirit. When you feel that you feel that your brothers and sisters, you know that you got the same father, and I'm thankful for that. Let me mention before I get into the message this morning, uh, Misty has been so gracious to make. I know that some of you all are supporting the soup kitchen ministry that we do every year. We are taking care of 55 kids down in South America, and some of you had to ask for a coupon book, like you pay uh, a bank payment every month. If you're supporting a soup kitchen kid and you would like one of these, we have some available and we can make more. So if that helps you, some people have a hard time remembering whether they've paid or they haven't paid for a particular month. So if you tear this off and turn it in with your offering to the kids, that helps a lot for some folks. So if you need that, those are available. And I would, uh, uh, matter of fact, they're back at the welcome desk. They're back there on the shelf at the welcome desk if anybody needs any. Those of you that work the welcome desk, this is what they look like, Rose. So if anybody wants to get one of those, if you all can help us, that would be great. So this morning, before we get into the message, I want to uh, just say a word of prayer and, and uh, greet you and, and say how thankful that I am that God is still on the throne this morning. And no matter what you're facing, it seems like a lot of, fa- a lot of people are facing some tough, tough issues these days. And I can feel it in the service today. I could feel a lot of folk are feeling down, and I don't know if it's maybe because you've been uh, cooped up for a while and uh, the sunshine hasn't done anything for you yet, you haven't thawed out, but I'm praying this morning that before we leave that we get a a good thawing out, that we get a good breaking up in our spirit, that God begins to let the rays of His sunshine just come through and warm up our hearts today. I mean, I'm saved, aren't you? It doesn't matter if it's snowing outside or if it's four below, I'm saved. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to get there. I'm ready. Are you ready this morning? Are you happy and you know it? Well, then say amen. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. amen. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Father, we love you so much today. Thank you for this time that you've given us together this morning. I ask you now, as we get into the Word, your precious Word, that this Word would always touch our hearts and find fertile soil. Lord, that there will be seeds planted today that will grow up in days to come and bring much fruit. I love you. I thank you, Father, that you've trusted me once again this morning to speak to your people And I count that such a huge honor today, and I appreciate the opportunity again. And I pray that you'll put me aside, put me behind the cross, and let the Word of the living God minister in people's hearts and lives. Holy Spirit, I pray that you'd use my voice, that your words will come forth in the name of Jesus, that the power of your great love might be manifest in this place. In Jesus' name, and the church said... Amen. If you're joining us this morning on Facebook, and I know that a lot of you are, we've had many texts and calls, people that can't get out of their house, can't get out of their subdivision. Some folk are sick. I know the Rose family is going through some sickness. I know that uh, Brother Robert York is sick this morning and several others that are having problems, but we pray for you and we thank you for joining by Facebook and we ask the Lord to help you and make all of you that are weary and feeling bad feel much better. This morning I want to look at, um, I guess, kind of a tricky phrase and you might say, Brother Dale, I know I'm saved and I'm saved. My salvation is free. It didn't cost me anything and 
That's exactly right, but I want to help us to understand something this morning, that when we get into the Word of God, we find out that God requires something of us. Look over to your neighbor and say, God requires. God requires. There are requirements that are in the Word of God, and He said, if we would believe, we could be saved. Did you know that that if is a requirement. That is a conditional phrase, and it says, if we will believe. He wants everybody to be saved. That's His perfect will for everyone to be saved. For it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, that all should be born again, that all should have eternal life. And you say, Brother Dale, why is it conditional? Because the Lord loves you and I so much that He chose to give us a choice. And he said, if you want me, you choose me. So it's conditional. Salvation is conditional. Mercy is conditional. You say, Brother Dale, can you prove that? Oh, but I can, or I wouldn't be preaching it this morning. Let's look at the Word of God. Just wondering today, before you get into the Word this morning, and I'm turning to Philippians, if you want to look there with me. This is a pastoral message. It can be a any kind of message that you want it to be if it ministers to you, but this is really to the church. This is really to the people. This is to the people who know that they're born again. It can be a message that reaches out in an evangelistic tone if you want it to, but this morning, this is more to the church, to the body of Christ, to how to get in to get the heart of God, to find out how that we get from God what we need. Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 through 16. Just wondering before we read the Word, has, has anybody ever done you wrong? Somebody came to your mind right then. It might be the person sitting right beside you. But somebody came to your mind when I asked the question, has anybody ever done you wrong? Is there anyone listening on this cold January day, that you know that you have terribly been wronged. And that wrong has plagued you. Maybe plagued you for weeks, maybe plagued you for years. Maybe that person that wronged you has never tried to make it right. Maybe it's been so long ago, or maybe it's just recent and it's a sore that plagues you. But Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 14, says this, do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless, children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and a perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life. What is the word of life? The word of life is the word of life. It's the Word of God, and that's the only thing that we can build upon. Holding fast the Word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Now this morning, I'm going to be reading a lot of Scripture, because I want to give you a lot to build on. I want us to know when we leave this place, that God is expecting from us mercy to receive mercy. There's a trade-off that happens here. You say, Brother Dale, I don't like that word. I don't either normally. But this is something that we really need to pay attention to because if the Lord is going to minister to us in particular areas, then we need to be used as an instrument in this world where we live to offer the same things that we're looking for. Doesn't make sense, Brother Dale. I know, but it will. Hang on. Hold on. Matthew Chapter 5, verse number 7. Blessed are the merciful. Say that with me. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Doesn't that sound like a trade-off to you? Sounds like a trade-off to me, because blessed are the merciful, and because they were merciful, they get mercy. So mercy for mercy. Let's look at James. Chapter 2, verse number 13. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Let's look at Proverbs 21.13. Whoever shuts his ear to the cry of the poor will also cry himself 
and not be heard. So let's go on again to Matthew chapter 6. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But then listen at verse number 15. If mercy is not offered, mercy is not given. Are you hearing me? This is a trade-off. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Isn't that deep this morning, yet very, very simple? It's an absolute a claim. It's an absolute statement. It's an absolute necessity that we understand. If we have people that have wronged us, and all of you nodded your head that you have, it may have been a sixth grade teacher that belittled you and made you feel like snuff, and all of a sudden from the age of sixth grade, whatever that age is, you have felt uh, um, uh, imperfect, you felt beat down, and I'm using a crazy example this morning, but whatever it is that plagues us today, we must learn to offer forgiveness or mercy. We must learn to push that out front even before it is received in our pocketbook. We must understand that to offer mercy, we receive mercy. I mean, after all, When we were still in sin, we received what? Mercy. When you and I were lost, lost as a ball in high weeds, the Lord Jesus Christ loved us. When we were still in sin, Jesus died for us that we might be saved. So he who shows no mercy to man, or in other words, he who does not exercise himself in the works of charity and mercy to his needy fellow creatures shall receive no mercy at the hand of God. We must consider and we must be forgiving. The people who hurt us must be forgiven. We must always consider how much Jesus has forgiven us. They sang about it this morning. How much did it cost on that cross? How much did He pay? What was the price that was paid for your salvation? And if it had just been you or me or anyone, He would have died the same because that love is so great and the price of love is always a big price. It's always a big price. We don't deserve His love. We can never earn His love. He forgave us because He's a merciful and a gracious God. Because we've already been forgiven of all of our sins and set free, we must forgive others by becoming so transparent that His mercy and grace will radiate through every aspect of our lives. Well, I would forgive them, but... Well, I could get over that, but I'd be fine if they would come and bow down before me and shed tears and say, I'm so sorry, I would forgive them. Is that what the Word says to do? And I know this is a hard message. I'm just asking you, chew on it a little bit and let the grace of God and the love of the Lord permeate through your life because this is a necessity to receive forgiveness. Man, I've done a lot of wrong. Any of you guys done a lot of wrong? Any of you all, the heap of your wrong is higher than the heap of your good? If you, <laughs> if you wanted to weigh them out, man, I got a big pile of wrong. And if I want that wrong forgiven, how do I get that forgiven? I forgive. And the Lord says, if you forgive, if you forgive, you might be forgiven. Is that what He said? You shall. I love that word, shall. You shall be forgiven. So if I forgive, no matter what they've done or what they do, or if they ask for forgiveness, if I just say, Lord, I forgive them, I lay it down at the cross, I can't do anything about it, I refuse to carry it. Did you know that the person who carries the hurt, even though you didn't do the hurt or cause the hurt, it's more damaging to your life and to your health than it is to the person who did it. The person who did it may never face it again until they stand before God. But you're facing it every day. And you're carrying it every day. And the weight of it is weighing on you every day. 
And stress is building up and pressure is building up. And it's like my mamaw's pressure cooker that the little wheelie dig thing up at the top went off and, and, it, and it didn't work anymore. It got stopped up and all of a sudden when it didn't wheelie dig anymore, you know that little thing. Some of you guys don't even know what a pressure cooker is. If it don't have a release for the steam, it'll make one. The top will blow off after a while. That's what happens to a lot of folks in America today. That's why we're having a lot of road rage. That's why we're having a lot of people killed, a lot of people shot, because the little wingy ding ain't working. You say, what's the little wingy ding, Brother Dale? Sometimes it's getting down on your knees and praying and saying, God, forgive me and help me to forgive everybody else. And God, whatever it is that they've done against me, forgive me and help me to forgive them. We're never to give condemnation, but always to be a giver of mercy. Ephesians 2, 4 through 7, But God, who is rich in mercy, because of His great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, the King James says, in trespasses and sins, made us alive together with Christ by grace, you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come He might show the exceeding riches of His grace and His kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. How do we get that? By offering mercy. By offering grace. It's already out there. Cassie, that mercy is already out there. That gift of salvation is already out there. It's been given. But how do we get it? By offering the same thing that we need. By offering salvation. By offering grace. Mercy and grace work hand in hand. Grace is what saves you. Mercy is what sustains you. Mercy eliminates the pain. Grace cures the disease. Mercy offers relief from punishment. Grace offers pardon from the crime. So, Brother Dale, my first point this morning, I, already, I finally got the foundation laid. This is point number one. Hallelujah. Now it's almost time to quit. What must I do? Pastor, there was a young man that came to Jesus one time and he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? I'm going to read you quite a bit of Scripture now. This, this message is filled with Scripture. And if there's anything that will work in our lives, it's the Word of life. It is Scripture. Let's listen. You can follow along with me. I'm going to have it on the board for you. This is in Luke chapter 10. This is a pretty deep subject right here, and it's something that we need to really pay attention to. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So he answered and said, You love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered rightly. Do this, and you will live. But he, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came by down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. What did he do? He needed mercy, and he gave mercy. He had compassion, so he went to him, bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, take care of him. Whatever more you spend when I come again, I will repay you. So of these three do you think was, which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? Listen to verse 37, and he said, He who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said, 
Go and do likewise. Man, was that ever a trap. That guy thought he was going to trap Jesus and he wound up with his big foot right in the trap, didn't he? That's the way the Lord does. He gives mercy and He shows us to receive that mercy. To receive that mercy, we give mercy. The Samaritan was the dog of that day's society. The reject, the poor class of people. The Samaritan was important to Jesus because He showed mercy to the hurting. We're never more like our Heavenly Father than when we're giving out of mercy. Jesus desires acts of mercy and not sacrifice, according to Matthew 9.13. If we truly love God, we'll prove it by the acts of mercy that we give out. So what are you saying, Pastor? Do we dish out what a person deserves? And I know sometimes, and if this message is not for anybody else in the room or on Facebook or in this world today, this message is for me. Because sometimes I want to dish out what I feel like people deserve. Is anybody with me in this corner. Every now and then, if that person at Walmart is rude to you, I want to back up about two steps and say, bless God, you need an attitude adjustment. Is anybody with me? If anybody comes up in your face many times, we want to climb right back up and say, and this message again, I'm saying, there's a whole bunch of fingers that are pointing back at me. But can I tell you, this is good for everybody. This Word of God is good for everybody. All of us need mercy and all of us need to offer mercy if we offer mercy then we get mercy so let's look at the next point this mercy I'm so glad (laughs) I've wore it out so many times but it's new every morning hallelujah it's fresh every morning it's good every day Lamentations 3 22 Lamentations 3 come on computer It went too far that time. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Because His compassions fail not. Verse 23, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. You see, the mercy and the unfailing love of the Lord never ends. His mercy is brand spanking new every morning. David said something like, Though I make my bed in hell, you are there. The love of God is surrounding. If we, if any of you, and God forbid that any of us don't make it to heaven, we're going to have to walk to hell through the mercy of God. Did you hear me? God's mercy is overwhelming, and He wants us all to be born again. Every day, we're given a second chance and a brand new start in life. We get up of a morning and there's seven inches of snow on the ground or nine inches of snow on the ground or it's raining and there's clouds over the house and we get raining and clouds in our spirit. And I felt it this morning. Some of us came in with sour attitudes and we act like a sour puss and it's time for us to tell ourselves that, listen, Jesus is alive. He's alive. He is alive. We are born again. We're creatures of a brand new creation. Hallelujah. We've been and born again and we need to remind ourselves we offer mercy for mercy he's been merciful to me so it's my responsibility to offer mercy to whomsoever will every day a brand new opportunity Psalm 136 verse number 26 give thanks to the Lord give thanks to the God of heaven for his mercy endures forever As God gives us a fresh start every day, so should we reach beyond the pain and give to those who have hurt us a fresh start through our forgiveness. Mercy is forgiveness soaked in the love of God. Let me say that again. I believe that bears repeating. I kind of underlined that. Mercy is forgiveness soaked in the love of God. Every day when we forgive, the anger, the bitterness, the resentment, the pain that we feel from the wrong that suffered at the hands of another is weakened. It's only through the giving of mercy that our emotional wounds will be healed. If we don't show mercy and forgive the unforgivable, we will never find total healing in our spirit, our mind, and our body. My third point this morning, becoming we and we must, you and I 
I must become a conduit of God's mercy. Luke 10 and 5 says, But whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if the Son of Peace is there, your peace will rest upon it, and if not, it will return to you and remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house, whatever city you enter, and they receive you. Eat such things as are set before you, and heal the sick there, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. How can we say that? Because mercy is offered. Forgiveness is offered. When Jesus was ready to release the disciples into ministry, He gave them very, very specific instructions in those commands that we just read. We find a four-step plan for effectively fulfilling the great commission that the Lord has called us into. First, we must speak peace to them. He said, when you enter a house, first say peace to this house. Second, fellowship with them. He said, stay in the house, eating and drinking, whatever they give you, for a worker deserves his wages. Third, take care of their needs. He said, heal the sick who are there. Show compassion to them and minister to them. And then fourth, share the good news. Hallelujah. What a four-point message on the power of the Great Commission. Share the good news. Tell them the kingdom of God is near you. So just as love is Jesus, and just as Jesus is love incarnate, He was also mercy incarnate. He wept with the sorrowing. Do you remember when He was going to raise Lazarus from the dead? You remember that? You remember that occasion? Lazarus was dead. He had been dead four days. Mary and Martha were weeping and mourning, and they were having a mourning celebration as they always did. Not a celebration, but a, but, but a wake, a, like a funeral. They were sad, and Jesus saw their sorrow. He saw their hurt. And your Bible says that the shortest, one of the shortest verses in the Bible, Jesus wept. He wept because He cared. He showed mercy because He loved. Where is our love? Where is our mercy? Some of us hold grudges and burdens and problems and situations against our spouses for years. And it magnifies. And when you're counseling with somebody... And I'm not using something from somebody from this church, so don't try to figure out who it was, okay? But when you're counseling with somebody, and the wife says, He told me 30 years ago that I couldn't cook. And it's been a soft spot and a hurtful spot all of these years. And even though she learned to cook, She still had that soft spot and that hurtful spot. And I'm using a silly illustration to simply tell you it doesn't matter what it is. They may have wronged you deeply and terribly and you're hurt and rightfully so. You may be a young lady that was abused by her father or her grandfather or her uncle. We see so much of that in the world we live in today. You may be a young man or an older man here and you had abuse in your family and you were abused and neglected and all kinds of stuff. Can I tell you, this bottom line, you'll never heal until you offer forgiveness. You'll never heal until you say, Lord, I don't know how to forgive I don't know how to get over it. I don't know how to heal from it. But Lord, here it is. And I'll never hold it against that person again if you'll help me. Sometimes, depending on the occasion, depending on the situation, the Lord will prompt that individual who is offering the forgiveness to make a phone call or to walk up and give a hug or to simply say, I forgive you. I didn't say that God called you to be their best friend. Depends on the circumstances. But it is of necessity that we forgive to receive. That we offer 
mercy to receive. Fifty some odd years ago, some of you know this story, some of you don't. I'll be brief with it. I won't get into the details. Fifty some odd years ago, my father walked out the door, left my mom, my younger sister, and myself. I was 15, 14, 15 years old. From that point, I had never, ever been hurt so deeply. I thought that our family was the best thing since sliced bread. I watched my mom and dad in the old cars when they didn't have the consoles, and some of you are too young to remember that, but they had a bench seat. And my mom sat right beside my dad with her feet sitting on the hump, transmission hump. I said, Brother Dale, what are you saying? The deepest hurt that I could ever imagine. I prayed about it. Some of you are hurting this morning from, from, from past things, and you don't know how you're going to make it. I'll tell you how you can make it. Jesus gave the instructions. Forgive. Turn it over and let me have it. Let me have it. For 50 plus years, I prayed and I prayed. DJ, I asked God. A year and a half, almost two years ago now, I guess, after praying and praying and turning it over to God, and I said, God, I'm not holding anything. I've forgiven. I've given it all. I don't know what else to do. A year and a half ago or so, I got a phone call one day. It was my dad on the other line. And he was crying. He said, son, I want to ask you to forgive me. You know what my first response was, Dad? I, I forgave you a long time ago. It didn't make it easy. Because my first question was, why? After 50 years. But God said, I'm faithful. I'm faithful. I'm faithful. I had offered forgiveness. And it paid off. It came back. And the hurt, yes, sometimes it's still there because I feel cheated. But Dad told me, just a few days before he passed, he said, son, we couldn't spend much time together down here, but there's a new day coming. And I'll see you over there. What's hurting this morning in your life? What's upside down in your life? Are you waiting on somebody else to make the first move? Can I tell you that somebody did? His name's Jesus. He made that first move, and it was a huge move. I didn't know they was going to sing that song about the cost of Calvary. But what a fitting song, because that first move, joy, paid for everything. Every forgiveness that could ever be offered is summed up in the price of the Son of God. Would you stand with me this morning? It's just now turned afternoon, so stand with me this afternoon. Just as Jesus was love incarnate, He was mercy incarnate. He wept with the sorrowing and gave companionship to the lonely. He took little children into His arms and He blessed them. He forgave those who beat Him and rallied against Him. The ultimate outcome of His mercy was the cross. Our corrupt, ego-centered, and selfish society often ask only one question. What's in it for me? Jesus wants us to ask, Lord, what's in it for you? How can I meet their needs right where they are? What acts of compassion can I do? 
Mercy is meeting people's needs wherever their needs are, in whatever situation they find themselves. It's not simply feeling compassion, but showing compassion. Not only sympathizing, but offering a helping hand as well. The true character of mercy is in giving. Giving compassion, giving help, giving time, giving money, giving of ourselves, and giving of forgiveness. And I'm closing this morning with this. Mercy to men brings mercy from God. The title of the message, Mercy for Mercy. You've been offered mercy. It's out there. It's available. If you looked at it as a big pool that you could tap into, you can tap into mercy. It's available. All you'll ever need. But how big's your pool? Mercy to men brings mercy from God. If you need something tremendously, and there was a big reservoir of it, Let's say that if you needed some money and there was a vault that you knew was full of money but you didn't have the key to that vault. The key to that vault is showing mercy. It unlocks the blessings and the mercy of God. They're going to sing something here and I'm asking you today. This is a family church. We're all family. Some of us know each other's business and some of us don't. Some of us don't want to know some of the business. But the Lord wants to know it all. He's interested in you. He's concerned about you. He's concerned about everything that concerns you. So as they sing this song, if you want to come up and just drop anything here, I often come in this sanctuary through the week and I I walk through this altar space. And I say, Lord, if I could see in the Spirit, I know there are devils that are dead there. I know there are hurts and pains and things that are laying here, spiritually speaking, as people have come up and dropped stuff here and received the mercy and the forgiveness and the love of God. If you need anything today, this message was for you. Those of you that are on Facebook, If this message has ministered to you or touched your heart, remember, when we offer mercy to men, we get mercy from God. He's just looking to bless you. Go ahead, ladies. Would you come to the altar if you need us to help you pray for anything? If you need anything at all, come on to Jesus this morning.